episode of Explore Killington. I'm Sarah. I'm Slato. And boy, do we have an episode in store for you. This episode is all about history because Killington didn't start overnight. No, it did not. We are going to catch up with the president of Killington, Mike Salamano. He is going to give us a rundown of how Killington got started and how it got to where we are today. Because like I said, it didn't start overnight. In fact, we're going on almost in 60 years. Yeah, I think coming up next December of 2018, yep. if I'm not uh, mistaken, am I right? Sure are. I did a little fact checking before I got on the show today. And December 13th, 1958 was the day that Killington opened. So make sure you mark your calendar for this coming December, the 60th. the 60th anniversary coming up. That's huge. And you know, I don't think uh, the story of Killington could, uh, it wouldn't be complete if we didn't include neighboring Pico, which actually was here even much longer than Killington. So to get out some information about Pico, we're gonna talk to our friend, Carl Acker. Now Carl's parents were some of the first instructors up here. They, they virtually ran the place over there and Carl grew up. And that was his backyard, that's all he knew. And he's provided us with some unbelievable footage uh, that he that he's had from his family uh, it is a great piece you got to stick around for it Carl Ack we're going to be speaking to him a little bit later <laughs> we're going to catch up with another one of our good friends here in Killington Colleen Collard she's going to tell us her story and how she ended up in Killington and why she loves it so much well you know it's also an Olympic year Sarah in a couple of weeks we'll be enjoying the Olympics from uh, South Korea so we thought we would open up the vault and we're going to take a look at a piece that the original uh, co-host, me, uh, Scooter, we did together, and it's all about Nancy Kerrigan and Tanya Harding. You may remember those two had a little special uh, relationship way back when in 92, or, but uh, it's a great piece, a real classic. You don't want to miss it. Mm -hmm. And as always, we're going to head down the famous Killington Access Road and hit up some of our favorite at Prey spots. We're gonna, not going to tell you which ones, though, so you got to stay tuned. So stay tuned right now, because up next, we're going to look at Mr. Mike Salamano, president of Killington. He's going to give us a little history on this beautiful ski area that we call home. Southern Vermont's tallest mountain, Killington Peak, rises to a skyscraping 4,241 feet. You can see a lot from the second highest point in the state, including three mountain ranges, and more trees than you ever thought possible. It's an environment that inspires adventure and exploration. Nearly 60 years ago, Killington's founder, Preston Smith, channeled that inspiration into developing an iconic ski resort. And on December 13, 1958, two Palma surface lifts ushered the first skiers up Snowden Peak. By 1960, the first chairlift was installed and operational, and within the next decade, the world's longest gondola, at the time anyway, was transporting skiers to Killington Peak in its 3,000 vertical foot drop back to the valley floor. Today, Killington is widely known as the Beast of the East. The resort hosts the Northeast's longest season due in large part to its industry-leading snowmaking system. Its expansive terrain, including sister resort and neighbor Pico Mountain, spans seven mountain areas 212 trails, and six parks serviced by 28 lifts. Beyond the terrain, Killington's culture of fun and competition has been forged by events like Rails to Riches, the Bear Mountain Mogul Challenge, the Dew Tour, and the World Cup. When the snow season ends, Killington sheds a few layers before showing its summer and fall colors. A true four-season destination, Killington's Adventure Center is open year-round, and the mountain bike program is flourishing as new trails come online year after year. The region's fall colors put on a show worthy of a visit all on their own. The Beast of the East is a dynamic year-round destination rooted in rich mountain culture and a stunning natural environment. Learn more at Killington.com. Killington Resort for that brief history of the Beast of the East. We do love Killington. It has such a big history here. We're so lucky to have it. Because, I mean, between President Pres Smith, Preston Smith, Pres Smith, who I was president at one point, yes. in going to American Skiing Company, now Powder Company, the Beast of the East wouldn't be what it is today without all of them. And you said it at the top of the show, Sarah, 60 years in December of 2018. So uh, I, hopefully they got a, they're planning the party already, right? 
<laughs> I hope so. I'll look for my invitation in the mail. <laughs> hey, well, up next, we're going to revisit a nice piece we did with our friend Colleen Collard. It's a little segment we've been running. We call it What's Your Story? And we're highlighting some of the more colorful and beautiful people here in Killington. And we've asked Colleen to sit down in the studio and tell us what was it that brought her from wherever she's from up here to Killington. Now she makes it her home. Let's find out a little bit more about Colleen together. Back in 2009, I had uh, been working two jobs. I traveled a lot for business and I uh, bartended as well on the weekends. So I had a weekend that was free and a girlfriend said, come down to Black Island. And I went to Black Island, hopped a ferry in my business suit and my travel outfit and went over there for a day. We got reined in at the National and met a bunch of guys, played cards. And uh, at that point, cards turned into four or five hours. The rain stopped and we found out they lived right behind the bar. So we were surprised we just paid $500 on bar tab and we could have gone to their house and been drinking the whole time, but whatever. Um, so ended up meeting this group, uh, spent three or four days, bought some clothes on the island, went home, grabbed more clothes, came back for three or four more days and met this entire group of killings and people. Um, and about four or five months later, got a call at eight o'clock from one of eight o'clock at night from one of them saying, "You want to go to Killington?" I had stopped bartending, so I had never known what the weekend was like, because um, I had bartended since I was 20. So drove to Killington, got here about 3 a.m. in the morning, and my friend dropped me off at uh, Snowshed, and I skied all day long by myself, and then uh, found out what Killington nightlife was about. Hardly slept the entire weekend, but I was sold. Came about four more times that season. And in April, I went to the basin, bought a pair of skis, pair of boots, bought a pass, and was uh, bought into the house. So the following year, I was part of the lunchbox, had craziness, had a blast, um, and I, I couldn't get enough of it, I was half share. Uh, it was a little too much fun, so a bunch of us girls went and got a different ski house the following year. year. We actually um, found the ski house right when uh, Irene was coming and hitting Killington. So we drove through the hurricane to go home and uh, we found Buka. But unfortunately that year I broke my collarbone on the first run. Um, so I, it was a drinking year because the snow was awful as well. And uh, once we did that, we, uh, the third year I found a new house, which is the one I'm in now. So it's been five years. And this house, I, uh, it's called the Black House. And I, I've been there for uh, first days, last days. I've been there, uh, I've bought all new ski gear, got a ski lesson, um, and that's where I am today. That's What Your Story with Colleen Collard, one of our favorite ski house ladies. And if you want to catch her off the mountain, you can head on down to Charity. She'll be behind the bar, but she does like to zip around up here too. So keep your eyes out open for her. Yes, she does. Well, listen, Sarah and I have a lot more Explore Killington coming your way. A little bit later in the show here, we are going to revisit our piece that Scooter and I did together. We call it From the Vault. It's in honor of Tanya Harding and Nancy Kerrigan, they had a little, uh, you know, off the rink interaction there, if you remember that, if you're that old. If not, you're gonna enjoy this piece. It's from the vault, we call it. And we also are going to catch up with our friend Carl Acker over at Pico. He's got so much history and awesome photos and, and movie clips that he's provided us. It is a great look back at the history of Pico. That's coming up on the flip side of these commercials, so stay tuned. Sarah and I will be back here in Killington, Vermont, right after this. My staff and I love to cook, and this is my invitation for you to come dine with us. Bon appetit.
Welcome to Base Camp Outfitters, your Alpine Touring and Telmark Specialty Shop. For the past 30 years, our focus has been to offer the best product available to help give you a great mountain experience. And if you're looking to save a buck, check out our bargain basement and consignment shop. Down here, there's always a great treasure at a great price. Also, we now offer the largest Telmark and Alpine Touring rental fleet in all of New England. And don't forget, Base Camp is where all your mountain adventures begin. Where's Mario? What a day! When in Killington, Vermont, and you want some truly great pizza, Dominic's is where you want to be. We make our dough here in the restaurant every day. Every pizza is hand tossed to order and topped with the freshest ingredients. You can taste the freshness. Don't worry about it, guys. I got this one. The Red Clover Inn and Restaurant is the intimate and sophisticated Vermont Inn for romance and relaxation. There's exceptionally locally sourced dining that is elegant yet casual, complemented by creative cocktails and an international wine list. And with event facilities that can handle everything from romantic weddings and rehearsal dinners to secluded business retreats, you'll be sure to come away with memories that last a lifetime. Get away from it all at the Red Clover Inn and Restaurant, affordable elegance in the heart of the Killington Valley. Coming up for you, come, we are going to catch up with Carl Acker and the history of Pico, which is super exciting. It's older than Killington, smaller than Killington, but the best family mountain, I would say, and I might be biased because I grew up skiing there too, in the east. Oh yeah, it's it's a, I, I, I'll call it a throwback only because it has never lost its charm. You know, it is a very charming uh, mountain. And if it weren't in the shadow of Killington, it would be considered, uh, you know, a huge standalone mountain of itself. But sometimes I got to say it might get overlooked a little bit, but you know what? I go over there at least once a week and I love skiing with the locals, Murray and, and mm -hmm. Carl and all these people. And uh, it's awesome. So we're, without further ado, let's take a look at Carl Acker and a little bit about his time growing up at Pico Mountain. My name is Carl Acker. I grew up born native in the town of Killington here when it was Sherburn. And I'm the oldest skiing native still on the mountain. My first time skiing was on Little Pico, A slope, B slope, as far as I could get up the T-bar because it was rather precarious trying to get up the top part. But um, let's say I was two years old at the time. And uh, of course, you're pretty little. And back then, they didn't have children's skis. So my father would take adult wooden skis and cut the tips off and put some bindings on, put some leather boots, and off I'd go. I was pretty young when you know my parents were running the mountain. I'd come home from school every day and put on my skis and ski until the lift stopped. And then a bunch of us that were young racers, we'd hike up on B Slope and, and go in the woods and cut sticks out of the woods and set up gates and run there till it was dark. And, and then go home and come back and do it the next day. But of course, I lived right there, so I could do it anytime I wanted to. My my front yard was was Little Pico um, when I grew up as a child. <laughs> Literally, you know, growing up as an only child, I had uh, you know pretty much free run to the mountain, and other people would uh, call me spoiled and so on, which probably I was rightfully deserved. But one summer. Uh, well, my dad taught me how to run the machinery, run the tractors and the Jeeps and everything when I was really young. So um, one Sunday after we got back from church, I decided I was gonna go uh, take the, the tractor that they use for grooming the trails, um, which was pretty, pretty basic back then, and ride up uh, Gnome's Knoll, which is a ski area off to the west here. And um, so on the way back down, I, I decided I'm gonna I'm just gonna slip it into neutral you know, and see what happens. You know, it was pretty flat, so non-synchromesh non gearing. 
So I slipped it into neutral and I'm putting along and all of a sudden it comes over the last breakover and I can't get it back into gear. And pulling back on the two steering levers as brakes, that didn't work either. So now I'm picking up speed and picking up speed and uh, end up riding the tractor directly into one of the tubular steel towers and completely demolishing it. Not getting thrown off head first into the tower, how I survived that, I have no idea. But total the tractor, I had to go back to the house and tell my mom and she never said anything and uh, I'm sure it was a big financial blow for her at that time because uh, she was you know, by herself at that point. And of course, the workers that were here, uh, I, I never heard the end of it. You know. Hey, did you break anything today? No, not yet. <laughs> my father, what he did here with the mountain and with the ski school and his involvement with Andrea Mead and her tremendous success in the Olympics and uh, it kind of paved the way. I mean, my father was very instrumental in developing racing here at Pico and in the central Vermont area and a lot of his military friends from the 10th Mountain Division um, were from here. They came back and settled here. They, some of them taught in the ski school. And so those early childhood days of, you know, the early days of skiing here, I think, uh, you know, back with wooden skis and putting leather straps around your boots and, you know, a lot of that stuff that people don't really know about. Um, those are my best memories. Moving into my senior years here, um, I still love to ski and I ski all the time. And I'm just so pleased to see the legacy of my family um, still lives here at Pico and the, the names of the trails and the, their dreams to see the mountain um, completed to the summit and um, just the whole uh, experience. The legacy lives on and I, I'm confident that it will continue to. And I, I love talking to people about it and I have spoke at functions occasionally and um, I enjoy being part of the history of it and, and still here to share it. Oh, wasn't that a fantastic look at some of the history of Pico and, and Carl's, uh, you know, lifetime experience over there. Uh, can you just imagine, you know, your parents are running a, a ski mountain, a huge ski mountain, one of the first ski mountains in the east. They've got Olympic athletes, Andrew Mead Lawrence over there, Carl's skiing around with her. Uh, the guy didn't know any different, you know. Other kids are probably out there playing Little League baseball and, and he's like, oh, I'm going to go skiing and stuff. Uh, it's just amazing. It's, it's a great story. Cool. It's very cool, and yeah. that probably explains why he's, they, Pico and Killington are still a huge part of his life. Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. you, you grew up with that. It's always going to be a part of you, and that's something that you can't take away from him or anyone else who really grew up here and knows Pico and Killington. It truly is a local hometown mountain, and if you haven't gotten over to Pico, you're missing out, so make sure you get over there. And a uh, quick promise to you, Carl. We've been talking about getting together before we get too much older, either one of us. We'll make some turns this winter, I promise you. Set it right there. On Keep them up to it, Carl. On air. Hey, what's up next? Well, we are going to head off of Killington. It has been an awesome time up here. We've had a great day skiing, and we're going to head down the Killington Road to our favorite Apre place. You're going to have to stay tuned because we've got a lot coming up, like From the Vault, Woo! Nancy Kerrigan, and Tanya Harding. You'll have to stay tuned for that. So more Killington TV after this. This is the best farmer's market in Vermont and possibly in New England, and you can find just about any food you're looking to eat here. Rutland is, is a privilege to have one of the few 52-week a year markets, and it feeds an economy, not just the people. The farmer's market here is open every Saturday and every Wednesday. Wednesdays from 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock, and Saturdays from 9 o'clock to 2 o'clock. So we'd really welcome everybody to come visit us. Hello and welcome to the Highline Lodge. I'm Kristen Anderson, owner and chef. 
We've just completed a facelift here and are currently open for ski season. Please come join us for Opry Ski in our Fireside Lounge. Take the chill off and sample our crafted cocktails featuring local spirits while enjoying the magnificent views of Killington. Our vibrant and flavorful menu changes with the seasons and always features fresh local products. We would love to host your next event or family gathering at the Highline Lodge, located on the Killington Road. When someone asks you, where are you from? Do you smile? Do you think of family and friends and neighbors? Do you describe honest, hardworking people who choose lifestyle first and then figure the rest out? Next time someone asks you, where are you from? Smile and tell them, I'm from Rutland. Help us spread the word. Tell us why you love the real Rutland County at realrutland.com. Welcome back to Explore Killington Slato and I have made our way down to the famous Lookout Bar and Grill. It is your first left as you come down the Killington Access Road right next to Basin Sports so you cannot miss it. Look for that clock tower. It's an awesome place. It happens to be Thursday here and we do Long Trail Specials, one of our sponsors for Explore Killington. And behind us on this iPad you can see Long Trail Brewery has joined up with Ski Vermont and they are giving away five ski packages and that includes lodging for two and your ski tickets to any ski area in Vermont that participates with Ski Vermont. So I'm talking Killington, Pico, Okemo, Sugarbush, Mad River Glen, <laughs> Jay Peak. I know I've missed a few. Bowen Valley, Bromley. Sugarbush. Sugarbush. I said Sugarbush. You did? Yeah, I got excited, but it was in there. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it definitely was in there. There's so, so many. So make sure you're coming down to the Lookout Bar and Grill. Sign up to make sure you can get your ski trip. I think you can go online too. Maybe check it out. Long Trail Brewing Company. Look for Ski Vermont and Long Trail giving away a ski package. That's right, and our friendly representatives, Kenny and Steve are here uh, this afternoon, Thursday here at the Lookout. And in fact, they told me in the Winter Survival Pack, there's also uh, applications or applications forms you can fill there. out to, to do it. So uh, we've done it right here at the bar, it's so easy to do, and we're enjoying a couple uh, beautiful libations, and we're waiting to enjoy these beautiful soups. Mm -hmm. Now, again, we're here at the Lookout, so we've got a little French onion soup, and we also have really one of my favorites here, it's the black and tan soup. It's uh, been on the menu since they opened, the day they opened. This soup is one of the items that has continually been on the menu since day one. Why? Because it is delicious, and it I'll tell you what. delicious. After that first spoonful, you're gonna, mm -hmm. you're gonna know what we're talking about. The best part about that soup, though, is so they call that the black and tan soup. It's a mix of the black bean and the corn chowder. Mm. But if you don't want one or the other, you can get just the corn chowder or just the black bean or just a French onion. They also do a soup special every single day. So when you're cold out on the hill, because it was cold today and it's been cold, that's why we bundle up, come down here, get yourself a hot soup, maybe a bowl of peanuts, a fresh long trail, <laughs> and I don't think you could be any happier. Hey, listen, well, we are gonna have a couple uh, warm spoonfuls of this to take the chill off after our great day up here in Killington, and we want you guys to kick back. Why? Because I got the keys to the vault. We're gonna go back in time here, some special memories from Killington from the vault. <laughs>
Why me? Why me? Why, why? Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end, and we must wrap it up from the lookout. We've had a great time here. Don't forget, come down here every single day. They've got great beer specials going on. If you want a free ride, you can call 422-LOOK. They're happy to come pick you up, get you home. They also do delivery, and they are open till midnight on Fridays. So if you're driving in late on Friday nights, you're dropping your skis off at the base and you want to come over and get a bite to eat, open till midnight. And get don't a forget, great bite to eat. Yeah, I'm sorry. But don't forget, open at noon, too. They're one of the few places here in Killington that will serve lunch. So, you know, a few weeks ago we mentioned this, and I said, oh, if you're, um, you know, just getting up to the hill late or something and you want to get lunch and then go up to the hill, and you being the early bird that you are, mm -hmm. said, you know what, I like to ski early in the morning. Now my day is done by noon. I'm going to come right down here at noon at the lookout. They're going to provide a nice warm lunch for us. And Absolutely. of course, uh, here on Thursday is when, again, our long trail specials all day long. 550 hibernators, 550 long trail ales. Can't really beat that, can you? Can't beat it at all. And don't forget to catch our locally produced live TV program. It's called Killing Today, hosted by Bettina. It does a fantastic job. Now, it's live every weekend, Sarah, 730 to 930 a.m. It is a taped program midweek. But it has live updates for your weather, your uh, ski conditions, all the lifts that are operating, uh, which lodges are going to be uh, fully open and stuff. It's full of information, stuff that you really need to know to have a great day here on the kit on the hill. It's called Killington Today, again, hosted by Bettina, 7.30 a.m. every morning right here at Channel 14 KTV. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't catch enough of Slato and I, you can always look us up on KillingtonTV.com. Or you can find us on those social media pages. We've got Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. So that being said, Slato, we must move along. <laughs> Stay classy, Killington. Till next time. Thanks again. It's 2 in the morning, and the bakers at Jones's Donuts are doing what they've done best for over 90 years. That's right, for over 90 years, Jones's hand makes donuts, pastries, cakes, turnovers, just about everything you need. Well, maybe not need, but want. You know you want one, maybe a dozen. How about tomorrow morning? Perfect. See you there. Jones's Donuts, over 90 years of perfection on West Street in Rutland and open Wednesday through Sunday. Hi, I'm Steve. Welcome to the Killington Motel. My wife Robin and I have been the proud innkeepers for over 10 years. We offer affordable, clean, comfortable accommodations and a wonderful breakfast to start your day. We are also home of Killington Coffee Roasters, where we roast and sell our single origin coffee. If you are looking for a bed and breakfast or a bag of freshly roasted coffee, stop by and say hi. We would love to see you. We are conveniently located between Pico and Killington. Espresso bar, specialty cocktails, art gallery, and restaurant. Liquid Art is the place in Killington to get ready for your day and unwind when it's over. We invite you to enjoy work by local artists while dining on healthy fare, signature drinks, and specialty coffee in an atmosphere that is relaxed, cozy, and unlike anything else on the mountain. Stop in for open mic night, art jam, Sunday night supper, or try one of our raved about monthly wine dinners. Killington's Coffee House, where everything is a work of art. Liquid Art, the bright blue building two miles up the Killington Road. Killington Sports is the first stop on the Killington Road and the last stop you'll have to make. You'll find the area's largest selection of goggles and helmets, clothing, accessories, tuning, and repairs. Best of all, you can get rentals and lift tickets here and go straight to the hill. They have great merchandise from brands like Patagonia, North Face, Obermeyer, Flylow, DeKine, Burton, and Under Armour, including the latest in lifestyle clothing from Kuehl and Purnell. Killington Sports, make it your first stop on the hill and get on the hill first. Sal here from Mogul Sports Pub. You know, the only sports pub in Killington. Mogul's offers free mini golf, air conditioning, two pool tables, dot boards, and TVs everywhere. Plus the best game room around. And if you're hungry, we offer wood-fired burgers, steaks, gyros, barbecue ribs, and of course, the best lobster deal in town. So just pop in at Mogul's and say, Sal sent me. See you there. At Northern Ski Works, we want you to have tons of fun on the snow. We'll get you on the right ski. We'll put you in the right boot. We'll get you outfitted in comfort and style. 
We'll get you adjusted and balanced. We'll get you finely tuned. We'll get you accessorized and we'll outfit the kids. We'll keep you informed at northernski.com. We've got all the gear in here, so you'll have fun out there on the slopes. Northern Ski Works, conveniently located in Killington, Vermont. Hey everybody, welcome back to Explore Killington, Slato and Sarah. We've made our way for the ski area down to one of our favorite spots to hit up when we put the skis away. It's Mogul's Sports Pub. On your left as you're coming down the road, it's the home of the $9.99 burger and a beer. I'm telling you what, you can't beat that price anywhere on the mountain. You know, I bet you go down to Rome and you're not going to find that. $9.99, you just can't beat it. It is. It's a great price. And if you're confused about where it is, it is left coming down the Andrews Road and just look for Jack the Big Smoker outside. That's right. Picking up some fantastic ribs for you to enjoy here at Mobile. Yeah, you know, this place has the best free popcorn on the mountain. Mm -hmm. My third basket before we started rolling here. Come in here uh, and get some popcorn. And while you think about popcorn, hmm. we're going to send you over to our ambassador's corner and we're going to meet up with one of our favorite ambassadors. Let's see who it is. When I was skiing and I was just out of college, um, I hooked up with friends that we would go to different ski areas um, for many years and just go for the day trips. And then um, we re finally realized that Killington was the place to come because they had extensive snowmaking when we sometimes didn't have a lot of natural snow. And then their, their, tra their ski trails are so diversified. They're not just like straight up and straight down. There's just a lot of personality to the mountain and the ski trails. And it just always drew us here. And it's just, that's how it, I started coming here and being a pass holder. And it's just a lot of fun. You just don't get bored. You don't. Cookie! <laughs> our man Cookie behind the bar down here at Moguls. Well, that was a look at our ambassador corner. One of our favorite segments to run here. We'll be doing it all season long on Explore Killington. As we mentioned earlier, Sarah and I are down here at Moguls. I think this is a DJ Dave post for this photo mm -hmm. here with this uh, outfit. What do you think, right? It is. I think that's what they call a daffy. Daffy, that's a, daffy. That's a daffy. And then we got, uh, there's Jack the Smoker right there, home of award-winning ribs. Now, Jack won't look quite like that. He's buried under about 17 feet of snow out there, but, you know, it does melt off him because it's, you know, but he's still 500 smoking degrees. away. He absolutely, absolutely. is. Absolutely. Yeah. And Mogul's has so much more to offer than just great food. Like Slato said earlier, they have the 9.99 burger and a beer. They've got the fresh smoked ribs, an awesome menu down here. We've got Cookie behind the bar. So if you haven't come and met him, you've got to come check him out and say hi. He's awesome. And then every Friday, go ahead. We have DJ Dave All Requests Live. So you can come in here every Friday night, request your favorite songs from DJ Dave, and he will play them all night long for you. Just super fun. Then every Saturday, we've got Supply and Demand or the Super Stash Brothers. Both awesome local music. Yeah. I mean, these guys are off the hook, and they know how to play music. You know, this is a place where locals come. In fact, um, I don't know, out of. Uh, yeah, 100 people in here, I probably know yeah. 89 of them, right? Yep, this is um, your local spot. So yeah. not only do we have All Requests Live on Friday, live music on Saturday, you have football, football, football on Sunday. So if you are a football fan, this is one of the only places in town where you can come and get the NFL ticket. They have a TV in every single corner of the room. They have them in the bathroom. <laughs> and they will put whatever game on you want. That's because true. it's all about football here on Sundays. And don't forget, Wednesdays, we got deals on Long Trail Ale also. Wednesday, you're here midweek. Come on down here and get yourself a deal on a Long Trail Ale. Yep. And if it doesn't even top it off from all of that fun, we've got pool tables and it is so family friendly. They have a huge full room full of arcade games downstairs so you can come in with the kids you can come in with grandma and grandpa we've got a family friendly dining room off of the bar area that's right so if you don't want to be in the hoopla which we know not all the time you don't want to be that's right you can go right into the family friendly dining room with the arcade downstairs for the kids 
fun for the whole family. That's right. And we're our little TV family, so we're having fun, aren't we? I know. Well, <laughs> I've had so much fun talking about that. We should probably move on to one of our next favorite things, one of my favorite things. I'm not going to tell you what it is because I'm going to keep you holding on for it from what the boat. It? Up next. Why get down to Mo this week? When you could get up and ski the snows of Killington. Some of the best skiing all winter happens just when you think it's summer. Every year we ski right into June with soft, easy turning corn snow under bright alpine sunshine. So when the rest of the world gets down to Mo, shouldn't you get up and ski some great spring snow? Killington. Every spring we get a little deeper into winter. Well, Sarah, it's time we got to wrap up our fun right here from Moguls, but don't forget, come down here for your $9.99 burger and a beer. And not just that, of course, look, y'all, we got a full-on menu right there, right? So, always something to eat. And as Sarah mentioned earlier, I think this is key. Very family-friendly. You say, I don't want to bring my kids into this bar room. They have a standalone, very separate dining room. You can go down there, get a comfortable seat, not be a part of this bar scene if you don't want to be. But we really like it. That's why we're here, aren't we? Yep, it is lively. There's always lots going on here at Moguls. So if you're looking for some excitement, make sure you head on down here. Look for Jack the Smoker outside. Yep. Always a good sign. He's going to be smoking up some ribs for you, some good food, like Slato said. And always a fun cruise. we got Sal, Cookie, and the gang. So you cannot go wrong. Yeah, it's a local place to be. Now, don't forget, we can always watch some fantastic programming on Channel 14. That's your local program uh, channel right here in Killington. And, of course, you can watch uh, Sarah and me on Export Killington. But you can also watch our morning show. It's called Killington Today. It's hosted by Bettina. It starts at 7.30 every morning, okay? So you grab that cup of coffee. You're getting your stuff together. The kids are getting ready. You're going to go out on the slopes. What trails are open? What lists are turning? What uh, should I wear for goggles or technical gear? Bettina has the answers for you. It's live on weekends. It's a tape show with updated trail conditions, weather, etc. during the week, and it starts every morning at 7.30 a.m. It's important you check it out every day right here at Channel 14. It's, uh, it's Killington Absolutely. Today. Absolutely, and if you missed some of the show today and you want to catch up on it again, you can go to KillingtonTV.com. Slato and I are there all the time for your fun viewing, and you can also catch us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram and Twitter. Well, wow. Slato, I think that does it. That does it. Cheers. Happy Till next New time. Happy New Year. Stay classy, Killington.